Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. If this is your first time here, my name is Risa and I was a freelance makeup artist for more than 22 years before becoming a full-time content creator here on YouTube. In my long career as a makeup artist, there is one product that has been consistent in not only my personal makeup collection, but I always had several shades in my freelance makeup kit. When I would do bridal work and editorial work, I would always have several bottles of Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. This full coverage foundation from Estee Lauder has been a favorite of people like me with oily skin for many, many, many years. And really it's not just a favorite of people with oily skin, although it does tend to work best for those with that skin type. I am aware that a lot of people with combination skin also love this foundation. And really anyone who needs their foundation to last for 10, 12, 16, 18 hours, they too often will rely on this foundation because it's always been touted as being one of the most long wearing foundations on the market. As with any beauty product, there are some critics. There are people who absolutely despise double wear. They think it's too heavy, too cakey. My opinion on that is anyone can wear double wear foundation if it's applied in the right manner, with the right skin prep and on the right skin type. I would not recommend this foundation to someone with dry or very, very dry skin. That being said, if you are someone who has tried Estee Lauder Double Wear and you did feel like it was too heavy or thick, my guess is, now I could be wrong, you are probably applying maybe too much. Oftentimes a foundation can look worse than it actually is if you're wearing a shade that's too light. But this video is not about the application of Estee Lauder Double Wear. It's about the possibility that there is a new, even better, long wear foundation on the market that I could 100% see dethroning the long run of Estee Lauder Double Wear as being the benchmark or the holy grail of long wearing medium to full coverage foundations. And that foundation is this one from Smashbox. This is the Smashbox Always On Skin Balancing Foundation. I purchased this foundation when it first came out about three, maybe four weeks ago. Smashbox has always had a special place in my heart or will always have a special place in my heart. I used to watch Smashbox on QVC, those presentations all the time. And I just loved everything from the brand so much because the brand was started in Hollywood, California by the grandson of Max Factor, who I think we all know was a very, very famous Hollywood makeup artist. Actually, I have to correct myself. It was founded by Max Factor's grandsons, two of them. So back in the early 2000s, I was a huge fan of this brand and a lot of the makeup in my freelance kit was Smashbox. Now for the past couple of years, I'm sure a lot of you will agree, Smashbox has sort of been pushed out of the limelight by so many other up and coming brands, makeup artist brands like Makeup by Mario and Pat McGrath, Patrick Ta. So people really haven't been paying much attention to Smashbox. But when they released this Always On Foundation, I was so excited to try it. It sounded so fantastic. And I have to be completely honest with you right now. I was a little bit hesitant to do this video because as I was deciding that I wanted to put out a video dedicated to how good I think this foundation is, I noticed that Tati, who is one of the biggest beauty YouTubers, put up a dedicated video to how much she loved this foundation. So I started thinking, oh no, people are gonna think that I'm copying her, that I'm jumping on the bandwagon. But if you know me at all, you know that I have done dedicated videos to products that truly blow me away, singular products, all the time. So when I started thinking about how I wanted to review this foundation and present it, as I wore it more, I also started thinking, you know what, this reminds me a lot, a lot of Estee Lauder Double Wear. I'm getting the same amount of coverage, I'm getting the same amount of wear, why don't I do a wear test comparing the two? So you're going to see 
a full application of the Always On. You're also going to see a check-in of the Always On. And then you're going to see an application of Double Wear and then a couple of check-ins of Double Wear. And then on the third day, what I did is I applied the Smashbox to one side of my face, the Estee Lauder Double Wear to the other side. I wore it all day long. You're going to see multiple check-ins of these two side by side. So without any further ado, let's get started. Double Wear comes in 55 shades. It's oil-free. It offers 24-hour wear. It's waterproof, sweat-proof, transfer-resistant. It has a matte finish. It's oil-controlling, and it's medium to full coverage. Smashbox Foundation comes in 30 shades. It's also long-wearing, offers 24-hour hydration and 24-hour oil control. It's powered by skincare. It contains hyaluronic acid and antioxidants. It is primer-infused. It's also water and sweat-resistant, vegan and cruelty-free. So just from that information, you might already be seeing a couple things that you may prefer the Smashbox because of. For me, I love that it is vegan and cruelty-free. I also love that it contains skincare ingredients. It claims to only be water resistant, not waterproof like the Estee Lauder, but that's not a huge deal for me. I typically don't wear foundation when I'm going swimming. So water resistant is fine by me. The two shades I'm testing out today are L20N in the Smashbox and 2W2 Rattan in the Double Wear. I would say the consistency between the two is very similar. On the first day preparing to do this video, I used the Smashbox Always On. You'll notice in both applications, I use a foundation brush. As you can see here, the foundation is going on very easily. It's blending out seamlessly. It's not catching on anything. It's not emphasizing my pores. And in my opinion, it feels very lightweight on the skin. It does not feel like I'm putting on a mask. Here you can see the foundation on one side, barefaced on the other. And by the way, for all three days of this testing, I used the same skin prep. I used the Drunk Elephant Proteiny Moisturizer followed by the Innisfree sunscreen. And then I waited about 10 to 15 minutes before applying the foundation. Here is a look at the full face of foundation applied. Okay, it is a little after 5 p.m. I forgot to do an earlier check-in. So it's now been five, six, seven, eight, about nine hours since I applied the foundation. And I'm shiny, but this is normal. This is very, very normal for me. I do have severely oily skin. So I could powder right now and I'll look like this again in an hour. But what's important to note is that the foundation is still on. It hasn't separated anywhere. And you can still see my skin underneath. And what I mean by that is that it doesn't look like a mask. It's giving me the coverage I need. Skin has texture. A lot of people forget that skin has texture because we're so used to seeing airbrushed images or Photoshopped images or filtered images. So you can still see my texture, but makeup doesn't get rid of that. It got, it covered where it needed to cover and it's still covering. That's the point. But in my opinion, it looks natural. It doesn't look like a heavy, cakey, full coverage foundation. So I'm really, really happy with it. I've been wearing this foundation now for about two weeks, maybe even three weeks. And every time I wear it, I'm just so impressed by it. And here it is from a different angle. So that was day one with the Smashbox Always On Skin Balancing Foundation. Day two was Estee Lauder Double Wear. And as I think you can tell here, it's going on very similarly. Everything I loved about the Smashbox application is happening again with the Estee Lauder application. I'm getting that medium to full coverage that I love. It's not emphasizing any texture on my skin. Everyone has texture to their skin. It's very, very rare that you will see anyone with perfectly flawless, poreless skin. They do exist. I have seen them in my career but they are very few and far between. What you're seeing here is a foundation giving me the most flawless looking skin I can have without making it look like I'm wearing a full on mask, like my skin can't breathe, like if I were to smile, my entire face would crack. I do not 
feel that that is what I get with neither Estee Lauder Double Wear nor the Smashbox. And that's what I and so many others love about it. We can get that coverage. We can get that attempt to have a flawless look without putting on a mask. And here you can see what it looks like once all of my makeup is done in natural light using my iPhone standing by a window. So I have been out running some errands and I thought why not do a check-in in the car in natural light. This foundation is once again the double wear and I've had it on for about three and a half hours now and it's holding up like double wear should. It looks good. What can I say? Shiny, yes, but always, I'm always shiny after a couple of hours. There's not a foundation, powder, primer on the market that I have tried, and I've tried them all, that stops this. But it's not bad. I've seen a lot worse, and all I need is a little blot powder, MAC blot powder, and I'd be good to go. Anyway, foundation looks good. I will check in at around the nine, 10 hour point. Okay, it has now been about nine and a half hours since I applied the makeup. I just woke up from a little nap on the couch. Whenever I run errands in this heat, I just get so tired. It just kind of wipes me out. And um, this is what the foundation looks like. Double wear, nine and a half hours later, no powder. I have not powdered at all today. I think this will most likely be my final check-in because I think the more telling check-ins will be when I have one on each side. So, um, you know, the double wear on one side and then the Smashbox on the other. I will do that tomorrow. Okay, we've made it to day three and the side-by-side -side comparison. On my left, I am applying the Smashbox Always On. And on the right side of my face, I am applying the Estee Lauder Double Wear. Thankfully, the shades are so similar that I don't think you can tell the difference. I certainly couldn't. As you can see, they're giving me nearly identical amounts of coverage. The finish is pretty much the same. It's a matte finish, but it's not a completely flat and lifeless matte. With both of these foundations, if you want more sheer coverage, you can use a damp beauty blender. And now it's time to see how they compared throughout the day. This footage was taken immediately after application, before I applied any concealer, powder, blush, lipstick, just so you can get a look at both foundations freshly applied on my skin. Okay, I'm about five hours into this wear test. Once again, we have the Smashbox on this side and the Estee Lauder on this side. I just went and looked in my magnifying mirror at my vanity, like my 10 times magnifying mirror, and I was really, really looking for differences. And honestly, there really aren't many differences. Both sides still look exactly the same. I have equal amounts of shine on both sides. If I look really, really, really closely, I feel like my pores are a little bit more visible on the double wear side, but just barely. Neither side has oxidized. Everything is just still perfect at five hours in. Here at the 10 hour mark, I want to do this check-in before the sun goes down. Once again, I just went to my 10 times magnified mirror and I stared at my face for like, five minutes straight. And once again, the only thing I noticed that was different is that my pores seem bigger on this side. And I wasn't standing in this light. I know the light's coming in from one side, so you're probably thinking that's why. But over there, there's no light coming in from a different angle. And this side, maybe if I stand like this, you can see that's that's my vanity. It's kind of a mess right now, but um, maybe this way. Clearly, I'm shiny, but I think I've said that probably five times throughout this video that that's just normal. I have very oily skin. I live in Las Vegas. It's hot. Even though I'm in an air-conditioned home, I was outside letting the dog out. I went outside to get the mail. And when it's this hot, and we're actually in monsoon season, so it's humid as well. Way more humid than it normally is. So um, 
I'm shiny, but if I wanted to go out for dinner right now, I could just powder and I think I'd be okay. I wouldn't be thrilled. Like if I had an event to go to, I would probably just start over because I just like to feel fresh. But um, these are pretty much identical as far as coverage, longevity, um, shine control or lack thereof um, at this point. And the only difference is I feel like a little bit more of my texture is coming through on the double wear side. And then I also had my glasses on and more came off on this side than on this side, but mm, not by much. So let's see if I rub this oil in, see if it looks any different. By the way, this is a good trick for getting rid of oil without messing up your makeup with powder. Not, with, not that powder should mess up your makeup, but I think you know what I mean. This is a trick I learned from someone who worked in, uh, she did makeup for beauty pageants. And this is what she told the girls to do, just rub in the oils. And it doesn't lift off your makeup at all. It's a pretty good trick. Um, so yeah, I'm going to call it a day and then tomorrow film my final, final thoughts on this whole experience. All right, I ended up going to bed a couple of hours after that last check-in. And before I washed my face and did my nighttime skincare routine, I looked one more time into that magnified mirror. And it was at that point that I was convinced that these two foundations are both fantastic. And I truly think because of the skincare benefits that this particular foundation has and the fact that it is cruelty free, it, for me at least, has dethroned double wear. And just so we're crystal clear, this video is not sponsored. Smashbox has no idea that I purchased their product or that I'm recording this video. I'm putting this video out probably for the same reason Tati put out hers. We want people to know how good this foundation is. Now, I didn't watch all of Tati's video, but I did watch parts of it where she said that if you have drier skin, it might feel a little tight on your face. So you want to be sure that you're prepping your skin correctly with an ultra hydrating moisturizer, perhaps even the addition of a hydrating primer. So that's another point of difference between the Estee Lauder and the Smashbox. I don't believe I have ever recommended Estee Lauder Double Wear to anyone with dry or very dry skin. However, the Smashbox does contain hyaluronic acid and other ingredients to hydrate the skin. So I feel like this is actually going to be usable by more skin types than just oily and combination. Now I can't say that for sure. Obviously I can only speak to my personal experience having oily skin. And what I liked about this demo in comparison to some other demos I do is that I was able to give you an opinion this time on how it holds up in heat and humidity. Because normally when I do foundation reviews, I don't have any humidity to be contending with, which definitely contributes to how a foundation wears on the skin, how long it lasts, how much oil comes through. And during this testing period, we had really, really high humidity here in Las Vegas. August is our monsoon season. We're supposed to have storms all next week. And you can really, really feel that humidity in the air. When we're used to being so dry, even 20, 30, 40% humidity feels like 90% did when I lived in Michigan. So even in the higher humidity, this foundation held up beautifully. As you saw during all of those check-ins, I still got shiny. And I think I mentioned in one of those check-ins, so I don't wanna be repetitive, but there is no product on the market ever that is going to completely stop someone like me who is just excessively oily from getting shiny throughout the day. Thankfully, there are primers that help, powders that help, of course, skin prep and skin care is very important. But the bottom line, as far as I'm concerned, is that this is a fantastic foundation, especially for oily or combination skin. And I can definitely see this growing into cult status like the Estee Lauder Double Wear. I would not be surprised if it ended up winning an Allure Best of Beauty Award. It has truly been a long time since I've been this impressed with a foundation. So that'll do it for this video. In my opinion, Estee Lauder Double Wear has been dethroned. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. 
Have you tried the Smashbox Always On Foundation? Will you try it? If you did enjoy this video, I really appreciate you giving it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, I hope that you will consider hitting the subscribe button and joining the Risa Does Makeup family. I do upload new content at least twice per week. You can also find more content from me over on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. The username is the same on all platforms. It's Risa Does Makeup. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video.